Hi everyone, this is Carolise and today we're going to talk about a very interesting topic and that is what do you do when Dev says no? So what do you do when Dev says no, right? So first of all, I am at my office. So obviously nobody's here and I had to come and pick up my monitor because I've been working with one screen and I'm like, no, I can't do no more one screen. I need to get my second monitor. So I came to the office to get my monitor. I was like, okay, let me just make a video real quick since it's empty. Nobody's gonna be <laughs> disturbing me. <laughs> so I thought I'd just make a quick video to talk about what to do when dev says no, right? So this happens a lot. Don't think that you are unique and that is just you. <laughs> dev just says no. And sometimes they throw you under the bus. You give them requirements and they say it's too difficult, it's too, it's too, um, too entailed and there's technical reasons why they can't do it and they have to unmangle the whole system to just get you to do one thing and because you want to do one thing it's going to break something else and it's just like no we're not doing that so <laughs> it happens to all of us it happens to every business analyst so don't think it's your your company and just your dev and it's all you know just the, you know the way they are it happens to everybody so just just take heart to know that we're all dealing with the same struggle. Now, why does this happen so often? It happens because developers are in the weeds, right? They're in the details. They know all the things that are intermangled and how things actually get done. And there is a stigma that business people just want to do it fast, like do it now, like there, it's easy, like it's computers. So yeah, of course you can do it. You know, we can do anything you want. And so there's this, this resentment almost that we all think it's a big fat easy button to get things done and they who are in the weeds know all of the challenges and they can't explain it to you because it's so technical and you wouldn't get it anyway so they just say no <laughs> just like no because i don't want to waste time explaining something to you that you can't even grab you can't get so i'm just going to tell you no and that's it and because dev has the power right it's like they can make it happen or not. And if you have the leadership of Dev agreeing that we're not gonna do something, it's very hard for you as the business analyst to break through that wall and get them to do it. But I'm gonna share with you some tips as to how to maneuver, how to manage a situation because it happens so frequently that we all should know how to handle it. So one of the first things that will create a problem is when you go to dev and you give them the solution they are the guys who know how to do things so you should be telling them what to do in context of how it's going to solve the business problem but when you start telling them how to do it like if you start telling them this needs to be a button on the left right hand corner that needs to show exactly this thing and you start getting into the house they feel offended because it's like you're telling them you're, walk, you're holding their hands too much and they're not children. And they don't wanna be felt like somebody's demanding every little manual thing that they do and they don't have any opportunity to use their creative skills and their own process to get something done the best way possible. Everything is dictated down to them and they don't like to be felt that their people are talking, that they have no freedom to do what's best. Does that make sense? It's like you, you, you know, emasculate them almost, like you take away their power or you take away their their analytical skills because they have their own analytical skills and they know what's best based on the code base that they're working on. So don't go to them with finite solutions. Go to them from the context of the business problem. This is what we're trying to solve. This is the reason why we're asking you to do this and see how that conversation changes because now they have the ability to come with their creativity, to come and tell you, these are the possible solutions and then you can pick or help pick one based on the, the business case that you understand the most, but don't go to them with minute specific solutions 
and then get mad when they say no because you know what they could probably have a better solution than yours but because you came to them like we want to do this they just say no and it's not malicious it's just like you have to empower people to give you better solutions because if you are the brightest person in the room then why are you in that room <laughs> right dev is super smart and they have a lot of ideas and they want to to help build the right product if you give them the chance so don't give them finite minute detailed solution give them the big broad problem and help them work with you to come up with the best technical solution to that problem now if you have done that and you've, you've given them the business problem and they still you know say no um, sometimes it's because they don't feel the pain they don't really understand exactly how painful it is for the user who's experiencing this thing and it could be that you may have lost something in translation because you are explaining to them what somebody else is experiencing and expecting them to understand from your explanation what that person is feeling and sometimes there are questions that they're asking you that you can't really answer because you're not doing it so i would suggest that you invite the person who is making this claim for this change or if the person if there's a way that you can get the person who's feeling the most pain the reason why you want to change the system if you can get that person to come in and talk to dev directly that would be more impactful because they can ask direct questions and they can get the answers and they can show them from a, from a business point of view why they need to have this thing done if you can get that subject matter expert in the room with dev and you be there as an intermediary that that conversation can go much easier because they can show them if you can even take a screenshot if you can take a screen capture video show them how they have to go click here click here click here click here copy this and how painful that is have them come in and talk about how you know serving the customer base is, is so difficult because they have to get all this information from the system that the system is not providing on time and all the other problems that you're trying to solve get the person who's feeling that pain to talk about it with dev and that could help with that conversation as well the other thing too is if you can't get the person to come in and talk maybe you could have dev themselves do it so let them go through the process themselves let them feel that pain themselves <laughs> Right. If it's something that they can do, if they have access, if there's any barriers that you need to jump over, if you can get that barriers crossed and have them get in and do it, then that would be the best example for them to know exactly the problem. And then they can really, really come up with good solutions. So wherever possible, if they're willing, could you just ask them to please try doing this yourself? And you see what I'm talking about because they need to understand where the business is coming from for them to know that this is why you're asking it. Because sometimes they just think that, you know, business people just want it to be easy because easy is better, but they don't understand how all the effort it takes to make one thing easier. And so if you can show them how painful it is, that I think that would go a long way. The other thing too is to come up with a secondary, always have a secondary, secondary solution in your back pocket. Like always say, okay, I would like you to do this but you've already thought through all the reasons they're going to say no. And you've already thought about, okay, how could I make it smaller? How could I, what can I remove that would still solve the business problem, but easier for dev to deliver quicker. Don't boil the ocean. Don't ask for like this, or maybe you should ask for it, but have a subset ready just in case they say no. Right. Not to say you're going to give mediocre value to the customer or to the business, but you have to learn how to balance and where to draw the line and what you can compromise on. Because sometimes some things that you're asking for are nice to haves, to be honest. Like some of the nice to haves are just extra stuff thrown in there because it would be great if we could do this and this and this and this and this. But it's not really crucial for your business or for your customer to be able to function. So let's not throw in all of these nice to haves at once and if we ask for the world and they say no then let's let's get a smaller thing let's get a piece of the world <laughs> and then let's get a country <laughs> and then let's get an island so not to say that you're going to end up with nothing but just be flexible and be able to balance and if you know the use case very well know the use case know what the customer absolutely must have that you cannot 
you know, you can, can compromise on. So if you know what needs to be there, then you can know what you can bargain with and what you can take out just to make it easier for them to estimate, to understand and to do and to say yes to. Now, the other thing I would say for when Dev says no is to be able to get buy-in, right? You have to get buy-in from the the people above you, the people around you. So it's your informal network in the office. So sometimes you go in a formal meeting and you say something and they're like, no. But you know what? There's a person who has a better rapport with the CIO or better rapport with the lead you know, developer. And you could, through that channel, kind of understand, you know, kind of work your way for them to understand why you need this done. And you could have somebody else speak on your behalf or speak on the company's behalf that, hey, we really want to do this thing. You know, what's the thing? And they could ask questions in a way that you can't because they have that relationship. So utilize your informal networks. Talk to people. Utilize your informal networks so you can get the solutions that you need through other channels, right? If you know that the CIO right, and the lead developer are always going to lunch together, maybe you just put a word in with this, you know, the lead developer and maybe he can talk to the CIO for you and something like that. You have to use all the tools available. Utilize your relationships and your informal networks to try to get that done. I know it's harder now that we have COVID, but you know, you can still do some of that via online means as well. The other thing that you can do when Dev says no is you can get a second opinion. Now this is kind of hard because you're all working in the same department and it's kind of hard to to you know like be asking somebody behind somebody's back. <laughs> you don't want to do that. But sometimes you could be in a situation where you're only talking to the lead architect, for example. That's the only person that makes decision at that level. And their decision is no. But sometimes they don't have the perspective of people who may be below them or even above them. So get a second opinion. Say, hey, you know, we're trying to do this thing and we're getting a roadblock here. Do you have any thoughts about this? Any ideas that we could do to solve this problem? Find somebody else who might know about the code, who's also a developer or in the technical team somehow and ask them what they think. Because sometimes when you're only dealing with leadership, they have so much things on their plate that their perspective is just like one more thing to do and this is gonna be so much upheaval and I don't know what goes into their decision-making process, but people below or even a little bit above may not have the same restraint. And so get a second opinion. And if a second opinion appeals to you, you think it could work, then you can throw it out. <laughs> throw it out to somebody else. Let's go back to the meeting and have another meeting and propose a new thing that you just learned about and see how it goes. So don't take when Dev says no to be final all the time. Because if you get a second opinion, if you ask them to try it themselves, if you get the, the SME to come in and talk about it, if you utilize your informal networks, you probably could over time, you know, by keeping at it, get that answer to change from a no to a maybe to a yes. So these are just my tips for how to work when Dev says no. And sometimes Dev says no for a very good reason. That is just a bad idea. That this is going to be solving a problem for one person or one set of clients and create a whole much bigger problem for everybody else. And that might be a very good reason not to do it. So them saying no isn't always to be seen as malicious and they just don't want to do it and they want to throw it under the bus and it's too difficult and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to help. Sometimes it's very, very valid why you shouldn't do it. And it causes you as a business analyst to go back and think through, was this the best thing that I was proposing anyway? Was there a better way I could solve the problem? Does it have to be a system solution? Can it be something in the process? Can it be something all we, we, we train people to use the system? What else can I do? to help solve this problem. And so them saying no will force you to go think through that. So I would say to you that don't always take no as a bad thing. And if you are told no, use the steps I just explained to you to go back <laughs> and figure out if there's a better way and together work towards a best solution. So that's my tips, y'all. That's my tips for when Dev says no. I hope you found this video useful, and I hope you subscribe. Like, why would you not subscribe to this channel? I'm very curious to find out. You're getting free information in a practical way 
that can help you in your career and you just won't click a button? I want to see the expression on your face. I wish I could see you right now to see what are you thinking of not subscribing. Please click the button. Click the button. Click the button. Click the button right now to this channel. Okay, and I will see y'all in the next video. Take care.